Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In June 2020, it was announced that the largest prehistoric site in Britain had been discovered, and it was located right next to Stonehenge. I've linked my video on this discovery in the description below, but recently there have been new developments that show that this feature, a ring of deep prehistoric pits 1.2 miles wide, is beyond doubt a man-made feature of the landscape. Since this discovery, there were doubts about the origins of the pits, with some saying they were merely natural features, like sinkholes. So scientists have looked further into the discoveries, and tests have proved that these gaping pits, which align to form a kind of squash circle around Durrington walls, is a man-made feature of the sacred Stonehenge landscape. Some believe the pits are like a boundary, guiding people to the Durrington Walls site, one of the largest henge monuments in Britain, and also a site of feasting for the ancient people. Durrington Walls is located 1.9 miles northeast of Stonehenge on the Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire. So, why the doubt? Well, one archaeologist referred to the pits as blobs on the ground, and said that linking them to Stonehenge was entirely hypothetical. Another archaeologist said they were merely natural hollows. The professor who led the team that made the discovery, Vincent Gaffney of Bradford University, was shocked by the claims and recalls that one archaeologist also wanted a geologist on site to help recognise the natural features. In truth, two geologists had already looked at them. Part of this huge circular feature has not survived, but the arrangement is certainly on purpose. The Ring of Pits is 20 times larger than Stonehenge, and it shows that the early inhabitants of Great Britain had developed a way to count, tracking hundreds of paces to measure out the pits. The latest scientific work, which includes remote sensing technology, has looked at nine of the pits identified, and experts have noted that they are all the same, which wouldn't be the case if they were natural. For example, sinkholes would all be different sizes. Instead, each pit is 10 metres across and 5 metres deep, and experts believe they were dug by the same people that created Stonehenge. Cutting edge, optically stimulated luminescence tests, or OSL for short, can date the last time sediment was exposed to daylight, and these tests on the pits prove beyond doubt that they were dug around 4,400 years ago. The new technology means that archaeologists don't just have to locate a piece of bone or charcoal to date a buried structure. Any radiocarbon dates can now be corroborated using OSL. Sediment analysis has also showed they were infilled at a similar time. The evidence shows the pits were being used from the late Neolithic all the way through to the Middle Bronze Age, after which they were simply left to silt up. This shows they were maintained for decades. The new work is the focus of a new TV documentary on the British Channel 5, titled Stonehenge The New Revelations, which airs at 9pm on December the 9th. Whilst many experts agree that Stonehenge was positioned in relation to the solstices, some speculate the boundary pits may have had a cosmological significance. Others say they were simply dug for human waste, although to me this seems unlikely. Researchers Andrew Collins and Rodney Hale have looked at the idea that they are in fact sound resonators, but I suspect there is a far more basic explanation. At the time of their creation, Britain was a farming community, and I have long held the belief that Henge and Cursus monuments, structures we see across Neolithic Britain, were all functional with regards to farming and animal husbandry. The large pits that are dug into the natural chalk could have been to collect rainwater, but I think that these pits were traps, to catch the mighty Uruks, to keep them inside and feed them up, to ready them for the major feasts at Durrington Walls. The Uruks became extinct in Britain during the Bronze Age, and we know that these enormous animals were in the Stonehenge landscape, and we also know the pits went out of use in the Bronze Age. The Eurux was a large powerful animal, with horns measuring a metre long, and their shoulders were taller than the largest people of the day. 
In Britain, they were hunted out of existence, and through time, they were getting rarer and rarer. And because we find their bones in the Stonehenge ditch, which some believe is a ceremonial placement, the Uruks could have been a sacred animal to the ancient Britons. Interestingly, their remains have been found at Durrington Walls. Archaeological excavations have showed that Durrington Walls was a site of feasting for the ancient Britons, and therefore, I suspect that Uruks were caught and then kept in these giant pits that circle the enclosure. Inside, they were likely fed and fattened, getting them ready for the next feast before they were slaughtered inside the pit and the meat taken to Durrington Walls. This is my own working hypothesis, but it does seem to fit the evidence. It links them in a very real way to Durrington Walls and gives them a function that works in a Neolithic and Bronze Age context. I'll continue working on this hypothesis and will try and find out more about the archaeology of these pits. And when I know more, I'll report it here on the Ancient Architects channel. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.